Good morning, class. Good morning, Hi, I'm Keith Moore. This is Faith School. We welcome you to come right on in and join us. Faith School is the place where our spirit is fed, our faith grows stronger, and we learn how to be overcomers. It's our destiny. It's what we are made to be and do, that is to overcome, to triumph, to uh, uh, allow the greater one inside us to manifest his strength in us. There's victory for every situation. Don't you let the enemy convince you otherwise. I don't care how hopeless it may seem or how long it's been that way. God can do anything. I mean, if he's God, he can do it. And he can and he wants to use his great power. But his eyes, the scripture said, are running to and fro throughout the whole earth. And he's look, what's he looking for? He wants to show himself strong. He wants to manifest his great knowledge and wisdom and power for people. Well, what does he need? What's he looking for? What's he scanning for? Somebody whose heart is perfect towards him. Now that word perfect just means wholehearted. And this would also be a heart not of uh, wavering, that'd be a divided heart, but a heart that is fully persuaded, fully convinced of him, his ability, his goodness, his faithfulness and kindness. So before we go any further today, let's, uh, we're going to all join together and believe there's an answer <laughs> to what we're dealing with in life. Is that right? Yes. There, and it's easy for God. Come on, say it out loud. It's easy for God. Easy. It's easy for God. And he is on our side. God's on my side, the psalmist said. And in the New Testament, if God be for us, if God's on your side, your team's going to win. Is that right? <laughs> if God's on your side. And he is, because we've chosen him to be with him. That puts him on our side. Let's pray and believe the Lord to get the answers we need today. Father, in Jesus' name, we all agree, all the faith school class all over the world, we agree together in faith, touching this, asking you for anointed utterance, revelation, answers, direction, a strengthening. Strengthen us with strength by your spirit in our inner man. Fill us with the knowledge of your will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Enlighten the eyes of our heart and quicken our beings to see light and truth that makes free. And we'll give you all the praise for all the results. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. If you would go with me again in the great textbook, the Bible, to Hebrews, the 10th chapter. And let's continue studying about by faith. Hebrews 10, 38 says, Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul I have no pleasure in him. But we're not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, by faith, the elders obtained a good report. We see throughout this passage that God himself has testified to the faith of his people, that that is what pleases him. It said, uh, by faith Abel offered to God the more excellent sacrifice. By faith Enoch walked with God and was translated. Verse 6 says, but without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. In verse 7, it says, by faith Noah, by faith Noah. All this week we've been on this, uh, learning how Noah's faith got amazing results in his life, not only for him, but for his entire family. Can the faith of one individual affect their whole family? Yes. It can. Now, you can't make everybody's choice for them. I don't mean that. You can't receive Jesus for somebody, no matter how much you love them. But your faith can affect the environment 
that everybody around you lives in. It can make it easy to receive. It can uh, be a godly influence in a dark world. And the Lord is very merciful. I, I've had him in times of prayer. I remember one time specifically I was praying about an individual. And the Lord had been so gracious to them. And they'd had, I don't know, a hundred opportunities that I knew of to get things right. And if, if they get what they've been sowing, it's going to be bad. And so uh, I asked the Lord again for them, you know, for mercy and grace. And the Lord spoke to me. I don't mean I heard an audible voice, but in my spirit, he said, he said, Keith, I'm going to do that for you just because you asked me to. Glory to God. <laughs> Glory to God. Is the Lord that good? Is he that kind? He is. And of course, he's still not going to make somebody do something, but he'll be kind to them again and give them another opportunity again. You know, we should always pray and ask the Lord to send laborers across people's paths. And also ask the Lord to open their eyes so they can see the truth and repent when they need to and come against the enemy that's blinding them. We, we can't choose for them, but we can do a lot to make it easy for them to receive. We can help them. So yes, the faith of one individual can affect their entire family, especially when they obey God. You know, one of the greatest things you ever did for your family is obey God completely. Amen. Follow the Lord all the way. Now, there'll be times it'll seem like you're just getting further apart from them because you're going one way and they're going the other way. And sometimes people even, you know, they try to make you choose between them and God. That's a mistake because <laughs> right? we're going to choose the Lord. Yeah, huh? Yeah. Why? Because it won't help you for me to choose you over God. That's going to wind up hurting you and me. But I have seen cases where people wrote me off, Phyllis and I, as crazy, as religious nuts, as this and that. Only 10 years later, 15 years later, 20 years later, the same people come and ask for help. Mm -hmm. And because we didn't listen to them and backslide with them, we were now in a position to help them with our faith and with where our life was. Do you hear what I say? The best thing you could ever do for your family is do what? Follow God all the way. Just, just go all the way with God. And it won't look like it sometimes, sometimes for years, but in time to come, you'll be glad that you did. They'll be glad that you didn't listen to them <laughs> and that you followed the Lord. Let me read this to you from some other translations about what happened with Noah. The Bible said in the Amplified, Hebrews eleven seven, 7, by faith Noah being forewarned of God concerning events of which as yet there was no visible sign. Like we mentioned, rain was a foreign concept in the early part of this planet. The scripture said in Genesis that at that time, it, the, the writing of that verse, um, it had not rained on the earth. Uh, now, I'm not saying what had happened exactly in Noah's time. I, I don't know don't know that we have the detail, but we do know that something very dramatically changed in the atmosphere with the advent of the flood. Things were different after the flood. And uh, sometimes people wonder, well, how, you know, it doesn't even make sense uh, that enough water could get on the earth to cover the highest mountaintops by, uh, uh, what was the number? It was... Um, several cubits, it said. So uh, the highest mountaintop was underwater by many feet. <laughs> That's a lot of water, yeah. right? <laughs> well, for one thing, there's a lot of water in the ocean, yes. right? Yeah. And if it didn't stay where it's supposed to, <laughs> that could cause a big issue. You got all this water in the um, uh, polar caps, but apparently there was an enormous amount of water in the sky. And of course, how much water can be held in the sky in the form of cloud? We really have no idea. Enormous amounts of water. And the scripture says that the depths, the fountains of the deep opened up and the windows of heaven opened. So there are probably some things there we just don't know about, but it happened. 
according to the Word of God. And it was these things nobody had seen before. Nobody had heard about. So when Noah's preaching to them, telling them, get ready, you, you need to get right with God because it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. They didn't believe it. They said it's never happened. It's ridiculous. It's not going to happen. Well, uh, everything in the story of Noah is prophetic. And in everything he preached, we can preach about today. It's coming. Is that right? The Lord is coming. Is it true? There's going to be a judgment uh, of the, the dead and the living, the scripture said. And there is a heaven and there is a hell. Thank God there's an ark. Amen. I said, there's an ark today and it's not a wooden ship. It is the Lord Jesus Christ. And you can be born again and in him you're safe from the flood of judgment coming on the world in the future. In Christ, your whole family can get in. Oh, somebody say, thank God. Yeah. Now, you can't make them get in, but be an example. Tell them about it, <laughs> right? Yeah. And keep talking about it. And not only them, all your friends can get in, yeah. right? Yeah. Everybody can get in that will. Sadly, millions continue to scoff and to mock. Scoff and mock. It had not, you know, because people say, well, it's been how many centuries has it been? And he hasn't come. Yeah, but he's coming. They said, you know, we, we figured out it was uh, anywhere from 50 to 75, maybe as many as 100 years that Noah worked on this. Uh, he and whoever he had working with him worked on this. And all that time he's preaching to them. He's a preacher of righteousness, Peter said. And so how many opportunities did they have? I mean, if, if we preached and warned people for a year, that'd be a good bit. 10 years, 20 years, 50 years. We're still, still saying, oh, you got to get ready. It's coming. It's coming. People say, ah, he's been saying that for 50 years. You know why he's been saying it for 50 years? Because it's coming. It's coming. And people mock and make fun. But the reason it's been, in their opinion, a long time is because God is so merciful. He's so merciful. He's so gracious. He wants to give people opportunity to get in. Do you believe that? Look with me in 1 Peter. And let's see some, some of these verses that I've been referring to. Actually, uh, Second Peter, we'll, we'll do it that way. Second Peter chapter 2 and verse 5. Second Peter 2, 5 says uh, that the Lord spared not the old world. And that's an interesting word there. Uh, it could also be translated former world. And it's implying a different state that the world was in. Like we talked about earlier, there was a time when the earth, the scripture says, was divided, implying that the continents were together. And even those who are not believers who study these things believe that or think that. And um, before the flood, uh, you know, so much of the stuff that we have today in the earth, God did not make it that way. You know, for one thing, the earthquakes the typhoons, the tornadoes, the extreme heat, the extreme cold. These are evidences that the earth is not right. It's out of balance. And according to the scripture, it's actually aging towards death. And we're told that in Revelation and other places, well, in fact, it's in Peter also, that Something's going to happen to our star and the elements are going to melt with fervent heat. The earth is not like God made it. But good news, he's going to recreate it. New heavens and new earth wherein is no curse. Now, we've never been in a place like that. It's going to be something, oh, never too hot. Oh, come on. How about anybody happy about that? Never have to sweat. Never too cold. Huh? Somebody say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. No tornadoes at all. No hurricanes. None. None. 
No earthquakes, no destructive anything. You can run through the jungle barefoot and not step on thorns. Oh, that's part of the curse. And if you come across a lion, no problem. You can pet him if you want to. The lion will lie down with the lamb, the scripture said, and eat uh, straw like an ox, Isaiah said. The lion will become a vegetarian. Wow. <laughs> you see, uh, the reason I say this is because people try to say, well, look how God made nature and the violence and all that in it. God did not make it that way. He did not make it that way. Uh, he, didn't, he didn't create animals to rip each other apart. That's the result of man's sin and the fall and the curse that's on the earth. In fact, what happened in Noah's time, um, you know, the Bible said that the earth had become filled with violence. And the Lord looked at it and he said he repented that he made man. It grieved him at his heart. And I, you hear people today say, well, you know, you know it's, 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 it's a mystery why God made some people the way he made them. Some people are so cruel. Some people are so twisted. No, no, no. The Bible said in, in Ecclesiastes, I think it's 729, it said, uh, man has created, excuse me, God created man upright, but man has sought out many inventions. God made man in his likeness and image. Is he perverted? Is he twisted? No, no. So any of the distortions and evil and perversions, man didn't get that from God and God didn't make man that way. Y'all with me, friends? Man has sought it out. You know, the devil himself was not created a devil. He was created an anointed cherub that covers and the scripture said, until the day iniquity was found in him. He used the great things God gave him and twisted them. The devil actually invented deception. He fathered lying. God didn't create lying. The devil created lying. And he did it with the creative ability God gave him to do good things with. Now... God has created all, what God has put in us is good. Yes. Hmm? You can use it for good or you can twist it and use it for evil. But don't do distorted stuff and say, God made me that way. Amen. Don't do evil things and try to claim God made me this way. No, 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 no. <laughs> is that okay? A little, <laughs> little side journey right there. <laughs> uh, Second Peter, are you there? Yes, sir. 2 Peter 2, um, God spared not the old world, the former world, but he saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, or what's right, and bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. If you skip down to the third chapter and third verse, just a few verses later, he said, knowing this first, there will come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. He said, and people will say that now in the last days. And they said the same thing in Noah's day. They said, we've never seen anything like that. And there's never been anything like that. There's never going to be anything like that. Did you hear what Noah was saying? Yeah, he's been saying that for 50 years. He's been saying that for 75 years. He's nuts. Who builds a ship on dry land? Hmm? Well, there are people saying the same thing about us today, right? Oh, yeah, Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. They go, yeah, hmm. They're, you know, weak-minded people need the crutch of religion. Just, you know... Uh, don't pay too much attention to him. No, he's coming. Yes, he is. Right? Yes. He's coming. And in fact, Jesus uh, referred to this. He said, like it was in the days of Noah, mm -hmm. he said people married and got married and they worked and they came and they went. Why? Like everything's fine. Like everything's going to always be fine. He said, right up until the day that the flood came. Mm -hmm. 
and washed them all away. And he said, and that's how it's going to be in the last days. People will try to live on this earth like it's going to be like this forever. But one day, the trumpet's going to sound. I said, the trumpet's going to sound. The dead in Christ are going to rise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if you're not in the ark, you're in trouble. Eternal trouble. And it's, it's no, nothing to be taken lightly or made lightly of. And we are in the process of helping build the body of Christ. Right? Yes. This ark in which we're all saved. We're working on uh, Jesus said, you know, on this uh, rock, the revelation of the Christ, I'll build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And every child of God that matures and grows up some, they join the uh, father and sons building company. Is that right? Yes. And they're working, they get out on the job helping to build the kingdom, helping to build the church. Because you could call it the church, you could call it the kingdom, you could call it the body, you can call it the ark, because all those that are in it are saved from the, the coming judgment. Keep reading. He said, there'll be scoffers and they'll say, where's the promise of his coming? Since the fathers fell asleep for generations now, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. But for this, they are willingly ignorant of. They don't, they don't want to hear it and think about it. That by the word of God, the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. See, this also gives you a clue that things were different atmospherically mm -hmm. back then. Whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. So, there's a comparison between what happened with Noah and what happened, uh, what, what is happening now and what will happen with us. Go back to Genesis, if you would, and let's just uh, get a reminder of exactly how this happened. The sixth chapter of Genesis, and about the uh, eighth verse here, it says, it had said that, uh, well, let me read verse 5. God saw, Genesis 6, 5, that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. Did God create man that way? No. no, he didn't. That every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he made man on the earth. It grieved him at his heart. So violence is not okay with God. People being cruel and destroying each other is not okay with him. People entertaining evil all the time. It, it, it grieves him. And uh, he went on to say what was going to happen with the flood. Verse 8, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord in the midst of a dark, cruel, global violence. You know, uh, Sometimes uh, I actually run across a number of Christians that say, oh man, things are so bad today. They're worse than they've ever been. Actually not. <laughs> right? yeah. Have you read about this? Uh -uh. <laughs> We're, I mean, there's lots of spots in the earth where it's not too bad. You know, People get along fairly well. Uh, at this time, you couldn't go anywhere without just seeing blatant violence and cruelty and death and destruction and murder and rape, and you name it. it. The globe was engulfed in it. Why? Because that's the devil. If, if the devil had his way, the whole earth would be a violent chaos. That's who he is. That's what he is. And the Bible calls him, 2 Corinthians 4, 4, the God of this world. And if enough people yield to him, Everything will just come apart. It'll just go into chaos. Everybody only thinking about their flesh and what they want and willing to destroy anybody that gets in their way. That's what the whole earth had become. And, and God said, I'm, I'm not tolerating this. I'm not. And, and as he scanned the planet, one man stood out. Oh, somebody say glory to God. One man. You know, it makes you think. 
If not for Noah, would we be around today? <laughs> or would that have been the end of the earth and mankind? I, I don't know. I, I know God knew the end from the beginning, so apparently this is the way it was going to go. But uh, we need to go thank Noah when we, when we get to heaven and say, man, sure appreciate you being a stand-up guy in your, in your generation that the Lord could find somebody Amen. to keep this thing going until you and I could come along all these generations later because all of us uh, go back to him. We're all descendants of Noah and his, uh, his family. Isn't that something? You know, sometimes people talk about racism and groups and that kind of thing. It's really dumb because we all got the same mom and daddy. Is there Adam and Eve? If you believe the Bible, we all got the same mama and daddy. And so uh, it all goes back. And then once they were, you know, had to start over, it was Noah and his wife. And so we all kin. <laughs> is that right? right? We all kin. And uh, the Bible said, that Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And these are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations, upright, another one said, and he walked with God. So we see he was doing the same thing Enoch was doing. And how did Enoch do it? By faith. And so when, when God saw Noah and was pleased with him, what the thing that pleased him was Noah's faith. And uh, he told him in verse 14, he said, make you an ark of gopher wood and room shall you make in the ark and pitch it within and without. He told him the size of it. He told him the makeup of it. He told him he was going to bring the flood. But with you, I will establish my covenant and you'll come into the ark, you and your sons and your wife, every living thing, the animals. And the Bible said a little bit later on, and Noah did. What God, oh, somebody say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Is this living faith? Yes. He heard it. He believed it when nobody else would. How do we know he believed it? He broke out the tools. Yes. Is that right? He started buying lumber. He, he started, is that right? He hired people to do it. And because of that, God testified to his faith. We're still talking about it today. Come on, say it out loud. I live by faith. I, live by faith. I, walk, by faith. I walk by faith. I overcome the world by faith. The world by faith. I'm strong in faith, strong in faith. Giving, glory to God. giving glory to God. 